What we did is we put together some shots of training that we wanted to show you at the beginning. Um, beginning with, this is our traditional uh, get together and do the crew photo at the beginning of training. Uh, we have T-38s that we use for space flight readiness training, uh, acrobatics formation instruments. Uh, we also have a virtual reality lab. Here, uh, Jim Kelly is doing robotics training uh, with uh, Charlie and Wendy. Soichi's in one of our uh, simulators doing training with the camera for the ET photo. Uh, here he is in the neutral buoyancy lab for EVA training. Steve is doing uh, emergency uh, egress training in the launch and entry suit and also some uh, tile repair. Uh, we did some uh, trips uh, down to the Cape. Uh, you see uh, uh, Andy here doing some training on uh, the inspection. He was the, our lead on the inspection. And uh, Wendy was our uh, lead on transfer. Uh, this is the uh, MPLM and transfer training. Uh, her and Charlie worked on that together during the flight. Charlie also worked on the inspection. Um, here they are uh, practicing the robot arm inspection. And this is the Discovery's wing leading edge that we inspected during the mission and also inspected a pre-flight. Well, we finally made it to July 26th. This is the Astrovan and the walk out of crew quarters, our strap-in. This is the mid-deck. Uh, Wendy's getting in her seat. You see uh, Andy in the background, Charlie's in the foreground. And this is the start. After many, many years of work, we got discovered. Booster separation here. The cameras on the boosters actually follow, follow them down to the ocean. And as you know, they're retrieved and reused. Back to the uh, LOX feed line camera. First time we've flown a camera in this position, it worked quite well. Here's the roll to heads up. You can see the horizon in the background. That was about six minutes in the flight. Here we are about eight minutes and 20 seconds. We have main engine cutoff. And shortly after that, you see the forward attach point. We're going to separate from the tank. The tank is going to fall away, and we will uh, pitch around. Mission Discovery, we have a good plus X maneuver. We'll pitch around and photograph the tank. Of course, once we were on orbit, we had to configure for on-orbit operations. So we opened the payload bay doors to expose the radiators, and then got about going to work. One of the important objectives of this flight and one of the great successes was, of course, uh, the inspection of the wing leading edge and the TPS. And to do that, we used the boom that you saw a moment ago, which carried sensors and cameras on it that enables to record these views of the wing leading edge and the nose cap to ensure that uh, those regions have not suffered any damage during the launch phase. We also used the cameras on the robotic arm to inspect the crew cabin of the orbiter as you see here, passing the hatchway, which just the day before we'd crawled through to ingress on the launch pad. Because we had these systems on board, we were able to survey the entire exterior of the orbiter and verify that it had good integrity and would be safe for entry uh, at the end of the mission. We got to uh, flight day three, and this is an orbital maneuvering system burn that we're doing. <laughs> You can see it's important to hang on down the mid-deck having a little bit of fun. And we are going about the business of starting the rendezvous and docking with the International Space Station you see here. Uh, on the flight deck, uh, I'm sitting up at the commander's seat, and uh, Steve's up there with me taking some pictures. It gets pretty crowded upstairs when we're doing this. Charlie's helping out with checklists. Andy is uh, photoing out the top window. Wendy's up there with the handheld laser. And Eileen's on the left uh, flying us up to uh, Space Station. Rendezvous and docking went very well. One of the things that we did on this flight that had never been done before was the rendezvous pitch around maneuver. And this allowed the people aboard the station, uh, um, John Phillips and Sergey Krikalyov, to take pictures of the orbiter. 
And so what Eileen's doing here is pitching us 360 degrees, and the station crew members are taking pictures of the exterior of the uh, shuttle. And it was from these pictures that we were actually able to see the gap fillers that we'd remove later on in EBA-3. Uh, but as you can see, this is a shot never before seen from our flight, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So this is what it looked like to the folks aboard the International Space Station. In parallel, this is what it looked like to us on board the space shuttle. This is, uh, we're almost all the way through the maneuver now, uh, coming back up to where the space station is going to be directly above us again. You can see it climbing above the tail as it went back up. From there, Eileen flew the uh, twice orbital rate V-bar approach, and we got up to the front of the station. You can see sunset happening here. And we're actually going to dock with that white circle that's uh, right in the middle of the screen. Here's the aft flight deck. If you look out the window directly above Eileen's head on the left there, you can actually see the International Space Station coming down into view. And the next, next photo is going to show you as we come down into a docking with the docking stocking with the docking uh, we get to a mating configuration. Probably the next anticipated moment on the flight is hatch opening, certainly for the space station crew. And as Vegas already mentioned, uh, we were joining up with Sergei Krikalov, who just started his cumulative third year in orbit, and John Phillips. And there's Steve coming on board. There are a lot of traditions that are associated with the space station. One is uh, the tradition that we borrow from the Navy, which is being gonged aboard with the ship's bell. Another tradition is right here. It's a Russian tradition, and when you have visitors, you share a piece of bread with them. There's Eileen taking a small slice of bread, and Charlie as well. We had been told by the station flight controllers that John and Sergey were really anticipating our arrival, and you know, as anybody who has house guests, they spent a lot of time cleaning up for us. <laughs> and I want to tell you, as the person who was in charge of transfer, they did a tremendous job. We're taking you on a little bit of a space station tour right now. We just went through the node, which was nicely organized. We're going through PMA-1, which is the wall of CTBs. Now we're entering into the uh, Russian segment. We're about to enter into the uh, FGB. It's not always easy to translate in space, but you get to do fun things like this. So hold on to your seats as we rotate around. <laughs> the FGB right now is a little bit of a storage area. You can see a lot of the transfer bags that are stored on the floor. But again, John and Sergey done a great job organizing everything for us. Some areas are small, and so you have a traffic jam. Here's Charlie going high. And our cameraman is going low. And now you're into the uh, service module, which is a great area to hang out. We shared every meal, dinner time that we could with the station crew. And it was a rare opportunity that we had just to hang around for a little bit. You see Sergey and Eileen enjoying a little bit of a break. Those uh, moments were few and far between. Literally, as soon as we got on board the space station, it was time for us to start robotic operations. Vegas and I were the prime space station robotic arm operators. One of the first things we had to do was grapple the boom and hand it off to the shuttle arm, and you saw that maneuver right there. The next flight day, it was time for us to install the MPLM. Meanwhile, down in the mid-deck, EVA folks are preparing for the first spacewalks. Yes, we are doing very hard degassing the water back to make sure you can feel the full volume of the water before the EVA and make sure I put the pants on before we get out. And we can, <laughs> you can see the big uh, digital camera floating behind us and waving. That's the sign language in Japanese, thank you. And Steve Ray is very happy before opening the door. This is a shot from uh, mid-deck uh, that uh, I'm going outside. This is a view from outside that um, we should make sure that we are uh, starting the EVA. And the very first task was the uh, demonstration of the uh, on-orbit repair of the uh, TPS. And we'll check the tools one more time before we start the uh, demonstration. The first demonstration was CB Ray did uh, crack repair for the RCC. He used the uh, NOVAX uh, non-oxide adhesive experimental. And that's uh, using a spatula, Steve doing uh, Iron Chef in space. <laughs> Tastes like uh, peanut butter. And I'm using the uh, tile repair, we call the EWA, uh, emittance wash applicator, using a shugu type uh, application to the damaged tile. And uh, this shape we call it a PGT shape. I thought it was uh, representing Japanese island. <laughs> and uh, both uh, demonstrations were great. 
and we go move on to the fun part of riding the arm and uh, let Steve Ray describe the uh, ride on the arm. Riding the arm up and seeing views like this was a great way to uh, spend your first couple hours outside. We spent a little over 20 hours outside and uh, with the three EVAs and it was just uh, a real pleasure to with, work with uh, Suichi-san. We were just spacewalk brothers after uh, so many years of training together. This is the helmet cam view of uh, climbing around on the space station, is what it looks like. And uh, when Suichi's out on the end of the arm carrying that big control moment gyro that he replaced, that's what he looked like. Spectacular view. Here it is uh, being installed uh, in its carrying location uh, back in the payload bay. We brought up a new one and replaced the uh, broken one on station. Suichi is uh, <laughs> checking his hair. Look at that big vortex pattern on the, on, on the, in the ground there. The things that you can see while you're doing an EVA are, uh, are, are truly wonderful. It was uh, time to, if you look at that little spacewalking guy off the nose of the orbiter, that's uh, EV-2 working on uh, uh, moving up to the gap filler. Wendy was uh, flying the arm with Vegas' help. Andy was supervising. We reached out and uh, pulled out those gap fillers that were a little too far forward for us to be comfortable with. And the ground team put together a wonderful plan for us. It worked great. And uh, we were pleased that the gap filler came right out. It's a little red RTV on it. That's the stuff that bonds it together, although not perfectly, obviously. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, Suichi and I uh, were sort of taking pictures of each other as we came back. And this is what the gap fillers really look like. They're sort of a cardboardy type uh, substance. Vegas and I got to do some uh, repair work of our own only indoors. And this was an RCC plug, reinforced carbon-carbon plug demo where you would actually repair a hole in the leading edge. And this, and this was a carbon silicon carbide pro produced by Thiokol. Here is uh, John Phillips, Vegas, and Wendy putting in one of the payloads we brought up, which was the HRF rack. And John was very happy to get this because that meant he had a legitimate reason to be on station and do work. <laughs> now, the real brains behind transfer was Wendy, of course. We were basically her drones. And, and Wendy, and thanks to Cindy did, did a fantastic job, and really the best way to transfer this cargo was basically form a conga line. And when you have several people, this is me tossing some bags which were tossed to me out, and this is going back in, going to Andy. Seems to be a little bit overloaded here. Looks like an old Lucy uh, flick, but, uh, and then he's passing them off to Wendy. And, of course, Eileen was the uh, water uh, a person that collected all the water and here uh, Sergey Vegas and I are wrestling with that famous ZSR rack and we're trying to figure out just how does this thing go together and put it all away and and we actually did figure out how to do that and got it uh, in, in place before we came home and I'm happy uh, Wendy did a masterful job also on the arm like you heard and, and her and Vegas both uh, flew the MPLM and put it back in the payload bay and, and of course we had a great time visiting our friends and colleagues in space and, and, and eating with them and getting to, to sign the logbook on, uh, on the International Space Station. Too bad we, we had to say goodbye. You notice Eileen is at the hatch and she's making sure we really do get back on the vehicle and come home. <laughs> After saying goodbye, we had to go ahead and leave, and this is a view of Discovery undocking uh, from the International Space Station. And one of the really fun parts of the mission, uh, especially for me flying this, was to do the uh, what's called the undock and fly around. And Eileen and I have switched positions now, and I'm in the aft flight deck uh, flying this, and Charlie's now got the handheld laser. And essentially our job is to fly around, take pictures, and look out the window. So this was uh, several exciting views of the International Space Station. We actually do a complete circle around it and we take a photographic survey to make sure that we know what the outside of the vehicle looks like. So, and beautiful views of the Earth in the background. And after that, we do a final burn uh, to say goodbye to the space station and start working our way back home. After we done docked and left the station, we had a down day, of course, and we had a wave off day. That gave us a little time to relax and enjoy the environment. Here you see Steve and Soichi trying to figure out what to do with some uh, EVA batteries and Vegas expressing his frustration at never becoming a pro footballer. <laughs> and we of course did some serious science, <laughs> studying the rotation of uh, bodies in free sp space, 
much to the consternation of the EVA instructors who own that tool. And Ireland is demonstrating uh, the technique for climbing into the bag and going to sleep each night. Of course, on these flights, exercise is very important. <laughs> and we kept our commander healthy and allowed her to exercise as necessary. While she was doing that, the rest of us were just uh, pigging out at the galley and having a good time. Some of us got to uh, play with our food, as you see Eileen and myself here, looking at uh, the behavior of this liquid drop and spinning it up to see what would happen. <laughs> of course, Soichi watched all this. I don't think he was very impressed. I think at this point he just wished he had a pair of decent chopsticks to catch his food. <laughs> Payload bay doors are closing, and yes, it is time to come home. We got an extra day on orbit as we waited for the weather to get better in Florida. Uh, here's uh, Wendy suiting up in the mid-deck. But we didn't get to come home on the first try as the weather was bad in Florida, so we, on the second try, we uh, did our entry into Edwards Air Force Base in Florida. And you get a look at the displays that we use on the flight deck. Our entry was at night, and in fact, we landed about one hour before sunrise at Edwards. Uh, this is the view looking back out the overhead windows. That's the plasma trail that forms above the shuttle. And you get another view from here. I don't get a chance to turn around and look at this, but our uh, flight deckers in the back uh, get a chance to do that, and I'm glad they, view they uh, filmed that for us. This is from the ground at Edwards. Uh, it's an infrared view, which is the heat that you can see that has built up on the outside of Discovery. You can see our nose, uh, the RCC on the nose gets the hottest. This is the uh, pre-flare, getting ready to do the landing. The gear is down. And we touched down on runway 22 at Edwards. After some uh, post-landing checklists, we uh, walked off the uh, Astro van and got a chance to walk around and look at the exterior of Discovery. And we found that it was in absolutely great shape we got a chance to say hello to our families here who unfortunately were in uh, Florida, but we did get to come back and see them the next day. And that's uh, really a, a great end to a great flight.